Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now, before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the going to the movies conversation cheat sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn to say phrases like, does this have subtitles? When does the movie start? And much more. Second, the how to talk about your feelings PDF ebook. You'll learn over 90 words and phrases for feelings with this bonus PDF picture ebook. Download and review it on any device. Third, 30 must know opposite adjectives. Learn how to say young and old, hot and cold, and much more. You'll pick up over 30 words with this vocab bonus. Fourth, can you talk about people's appearances? With this quick one minute lesson, you'll learn to describe others with words like tall, short, muscular, and much more. Fifth, want the language learning app that actually gets you speaking? Download Innovative Language 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll unlock hundreds of bite-sized audio and video lessons made by real teachers and start speaking in minutes. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get up to 45% off our six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hi everyone, I'm Kana Kano. In this lesson, you learn how to give your phone number. This is Mark Lee, and he's at City Hall, registering his address. A civil servant who is helping him says, Mr. Lee, your phone number, please. Lee san, denwa bango wo onegai shimasu. Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Lee san, once more with the English translation. Mr. Lee, your phone number, please. My phone number is 090-0123-4567. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how the civil servant says, Mr. Lee, your phone number, please. First is the name. Lee san. Mr. Lee. Lee san. This starts with Mark's family name. Lee. 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 After this is. San. A polite suffix attached to a person's name. Sa. N. San. This suffix can be used with any gender and translates as Mr. in Mark's case. Together it's Lee san. Mr. Lee. Lee san. Next is Denma bango. Phone number. Denma bango. This starts with Denma. Phone. De -n -wa. Denma. Next is Bango. Number. Ba -n -go -u. Bango. Together it's Denwa Bango. Phone number. Denwa Bango. Remember this because you'll see it again in Mark's response. Next is O. The object marking particle. O. O. Think of O. As a marker for the word or phrase receiving the action of the sentence. In this sentence, it marks phone number as the object of the request. Last is お願いします. please. お願いします. 
Altogether, it's リーさん、電話番号をお願いします。This literally means Mr. Lee, phone number, please. But it translates as Mr. Lee, your phone number, please. リーさん、電話番号をお願いします。Note the your in your phone number is understood from context, as it's a two person conversation. In Japanese, It's common to omit such understood information. Remember this request. You'll hear it again later in this lesson. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Mark says, My phone number is 私の電話番号は090の0123の4567です。First is 私の My 私の This starts with the word 私 I わたし私 After this is の The possessive marking particle. No. Think of no. as a way to indicate possession. The word it follows possesses the thing that comes after it. In this sentence, it marks Watashi. I as the possessor. Together, Watashi no. My. Watashi no. Next, do you remember how to say phone number? Phone number. Together, it's My phone number. After this is わ The topic marking particle. わわ it marks My phone number as the topic of the sentence. Think of it like as for in the expression as for my phone number. Next is Mark's phone number. 090-0123-4567 Notice how Mark says his phone number. First, he says each number independently instead of in groups of two or more digits. Second, in Japanese, hyphens are read as no, zero, two, zero, no. Last is this. In this case, it's like the is in my phone number is. It's a linking verb. This. Altogether, it's. Watashi no denwa bango wa 090 no 0123 no 4567 des. This literally means, as for my phone number, 090-0123-4567 is, but it translates as, my phone number is 090-0123-4567. The pattern is, 私の電話番号は phone number です。My phone number is Phone number. Watashi no denwa bango wa phone number des. To use this pattern, simply replace the phone number placeholder with your phone number. Imagine your phone number is 03-1212-3434. 03-1212-3434. No 03-1212-3434 Say, My phone number is 03-1212-3434. Ready? My phone number is 03-1212-3434. 
1212の3434です。My phone number is 03121234343私の電話番号は03の1212の3434です。Japanese has several numbers that sound alike, such as the number 7, 7, and the number 1, 1. To avoid confusion, Japanese users often use alternative pronunciations when given the digits of a phone number. The number 4, 四 tends to be pronounced 4, 7, 七 tends to be pronounced 7, and 9, く Tends to be pronounced Q. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Watashi no denwa bango wa 090 no 0123 no 4567 des. 私の電話番号は03の1212の3434です。私の電話番号は090の0003の9004です。私の電話番号は03の1234の5678です。電話番号は03の2255の6677です。Did you notice I omitted 私の電話番号は03の2255の6677です。The phone number is 03-2255-6677. When directly responding to a request, it's often possible to omit part of the response. Here, by simply giving your phone number, there is no need to include my. The pattern is phone number The phone number is phone number. 電話番号はフォンナンバーです。This can be shortened even further.03 の2255の6677です。When responding to a question or request about your phone number, you can omit the whole phrase 私の電話番号は As for my phone number, because it's clear from context you're giving your phone number. フォンナンバーです。It's phone number. Phone number です。You should be aware of these shortcuts, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. 私の電話番号は phone number です。My phone number is phone number. 私の電話番号は phone number です。Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say phone number? Denwa bango. Denwa bango. And how to say my phone number? 私の電話番号。私の電話番号。Do you remember the topic marking particle? わ。わ。Do you remember how Mark says, My phone number is 090-01234567?
私の電話番号は090の0123の4567です。私の電話番号は090の0123の4567です。Do you remember how to say please? お願いします。お願いします。And the object marking particle? お。お。Do you remember how the civil servant addresses Mr. Lee? リーさん。リーさん。And do you remember the civil servant's request? Mr. Lee, your phone number please. Lee さん、電話番号をお願いします。Lee さん、電話番号をお願いします。Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee and your phone number is 090の0877の6644 Respond to the civil servant's request. Ready? Lee さん、電話番号をお願いします。私の電話番号は090の0877の6644です。Listen again and repeat. 私の電話番号は090の0877の6644です。私の電話番号は090の0877の6644です。Let's try another.Imagine you're Ben Lee and your phone number is 080の0891の2345 Ready? リーさん電話番号をお願いします。私の電話番号は080の0891の2345です。Listen again and repeat. 私の電話番号は080の0891の2345です。私の電話番号は080の0891の2345です。Let's try one more.Imagine you're Hana Hashimoto and your phone number is 090の0003の 9004.Ready? 橋本さん、電話番号をお願いします。私の電話番号は090の0003の9004です。Listen again and repeat. 私の電話番号は090の0003の9004です。
。私の電話番号は090の0003の9004です。皆さんこんにちは、カノカナです。Hi everyone, I'm Kana Kano. In this lesson, you learn how to talk about your family. This is Ben Lee, and he's at a coffee shop with his classmate, Hana Hashimoto. Ben is showing some pictures to Hana. She points to one of them and asks, Is this your family? Ben Kun no Kazoku desu ka? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Ready? Ben Kun no Kazoku desu ka? Hi, Chich to Haha to Imoto to Watashi d e s Once more with the English translation. Ben Kun no Kazoku desu ka? Is this your family? Hi, Chich to Haha to Imoto to Watashi d e s Yes, this is my father, mother, younger sister, and me. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Hana asks, Is this your family? Ben Kun no Kazoku desu ka? First is Ben Kun. Ben. Ben Kun. This starts with Ben's name in Japanese. Ben. Be. N. Ben. After this is Kun. A suffix attached to a person's name. Ku. N. Kun. It is often used to address males with whom the speaker has a close relationship, who are younger than the speaker, or who are of lower social status than the speaker. Kun. There is no equivalent in English. Instead, the translation is contextual. In this case, it indicates a close relationship between the speaker, Hana, and Ben. Together it's Ben Kun. Ben. Ben Kun. Next is no. The possessive marking particle. No. Think of no. as a way to indicate possession, like the apostrophe S in Ben's family. The word it follows possesses the thing that comes after it. In this sentence, it marks Ben, -kun. ben as the possessor. Together, Ben -kun no. translates as Ben's. Ben -kun no. After this is Kazoku. Family. Ka -zo -ku. Kazoku. Together, Ben -kun no Kazoku. Literally means Ben's family. Ben -kun no Kazoku. But it translates as your family. In Japanese, it's more common and polite to address a person by their name and polite suffix rather than directly with words like your or you. Next is. This. In this case, it's like the is in Is this your family? De su. Des. Last is. Ka. The question marking particle. This turns the sentence into a question. Ka? Altogether, it's. Ben kun no kazoku desu ka? This literally means, Ben's family this is, but it translates as, Is this your family? Ben kun no kazoku desu ka? Note that this is understood from the context of the conversation, as Hana is pointing at the picture when she asks the question. Ben kun no kazoku desu ka? Remember this question. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Ben says, Yes, this is my father, mother, younger sister, and me? Hi, Chich to Haha to Imoto to Watashi desu. 
There are two parts to the response. The first part is はい meaning yes. はいはい It answers Hana's yes or no question. Is this your family? Ben 君の家族ですか In the second part, Ben lists the different members of his family as he points to each one. 父と母と妹と私です。This is my father, mother, younger sister, and me. 父と母と妹と私です。First is 父 meaning my father. 父、父、父。Next is the particle と meaning and in this context. と母 my mother. は、は、母 After this, と and と妹 my younger sister. いもうと妹 Again, と and と私 Translates as me in this context. わたしわたし Last is this. In this case, it's like the is in this is my father. It's a linking verb. This. Altogether, my father and my mother and my younger sister and me. This is. But it translates as this is my father, mother, younger sister, and me. 父と母と妹と私です。In this case, this is understood from context, as it refers to the group of family members in the photograph Ben and Hana are looking at. Notice this Japanese sentence doesn't include a specific word that means my, like in English. Instead, it is understood through context. Again. 父と母と妹と私です。The pattern is My family member word to my family member word to my family member word to watashi desu. My family member word and my family member word and my family member word and me. Note the particle to follows each family member. To use this pattern, Simply replace my family member word with each of your family members. Imagine your family members are your father, your mother, your older brother, and you. A ni. Older brother. A ni. A ni. Say, this is my father, mother, older brother, and me. Ready? This is my father, mother, older brother, and me. When talking to someone outside your family about your own father, mother, or siblings, use the following words. Chichi, father. Haha. Mother, Ani, older brother, Ane, older sister, Ane, Ototo, younger brother, Ototo, Imoto, younger sister. However, when referring to another person's family members, you will need to use a different set of words. Otosan, father, お父さん、お父さん、お母さん、mother、お母さん、お母さん、お兄さん、older brother
おにいさん。お兄さん。お姉さん。older sister. お姉さん。お姉さん。弟さん。younger brother. 弟さん。弟さん。妹さん。younger sister. 妹さん、妹さん。Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 父と母と妹と私です。父と母と妹と私です。父と母と兄と私です。父と母と兄と私です。父と母と姉と私です。父と母と姉と私です。父と母と姉と弟と私です。父と母と姉と弟と私です。父と母と私です。父と母と私です。Did you notice how I only named three family members? <音声>父と母と私です。My father, mother, and me. You can remove a family member plus to, to talk about a family of three. This sentence pattern is flexible. Did you notice how Hana names four family members in addition to herself? My father, mother, older sister, Younger brother and me. You can add family members plus to, to talk about a larger family. Let's review the key vocabulary. Ane. My older sister. Ane. Ane. Ototo. My younger brother. O to u to. O to to. Note, these words are part of the set of words that one only uses when speaking about one's own family members with others. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me. Focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say yes? Hi. Hi. And how to say me? Watashi. Watashi. Do you remember how to say end? To. To. And the word for my younger sister. Imoto. Imoto. Do you remember the word for my mother? Haha. Haha. And the word for my father. Chichi. Chichi. Do you remember how Ben says, This is my father, mother, younger sister, and me? Chichi to Haha to Imoto to. 
父と母と妹と私です。Do you remember how to say family? 家族。家族。And how Hana addresses Ben? ベン君。ベン君。Do you remember how to say Ben's family? ベン君の家族。ベン君の家族。And do you remember how Hana asks, is this your family? Ben 君の家族ですか Ben 君の家族ですか Do you remember the word for my younger brother? 弟弟 And a word for my older sister. 姉姉 Do you remember the word for my older brother? 兄兄ベン君の家族ですかベン君の家族です。ベン君の家族です。ベン君の家族です。ベン君の家族です。ベン君の家族です。ベン君の家族です。ベン君の家族です。ベン君の家族です。ベン君の私です。Listen again and repeat. はい、父と母と兄と私です。はい、父と母と兄と私です。Let's try another. Imagine you're Ben's college friend, Yukio Yamashita. You have a father, mother, and older sister. Ready? Yamashita k u n の家族ですか Hi, Chichi to Haha to Ane to Watashi des. Listen again and repeat. はい、父と母と姉と私です。はい、父と母と姉と私です。Let's try one more. Imagine you're Ben's college classmate, Hana Hashimoto. You have a father, mother, older sister, and younger brother. Ready? 橋本さんの家族ですかはい、父と母と姉と弟と私です。Listen again and repeat. はい、父と母と姉と弟と私です。はい、父と母と姉と弟と私です。Did you notice how Sasha's friend refers to her in the question, Is this your family? サーシャちゃんの家族ですか Is this your family? She calls Sasha, サーシャちゃん。This starts with Sasha's name in Japanese. Sasha. 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 After this is chan, a suffix attached to a person's name. 
cha, n, chan. Chan is often used to address females with whom the speaker has a close relationship, who are younger than the speaker, or who are of lower social status than the speaker. Minasan konnichiwa, Kano Kana d e s Hi everyone, I'm Kana Kano. In this lesson, you learn how to talk about your family from a parent's perspective. This is Karen Lee, and she's studying with her Japanese teacher, Tomoko Tanaka. The teacher notices a picture on Karen's computer and asks, Is this your family? Lee san no kazoku desu ka? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Lee san no kazoku desu ka? Hi, otto to, musuko to, musume to, watashi desu. Once more with the English translation. Lee san no kazoku desu ka? Is this your family? Hi, otto to, musuko to, musume to, watashi desu. Yes, this is my husband, son, daughter, and me. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how the teacher asks, Is this your family? Lee san no kazoku desu ka? First is Lee san. Miss Lee. Lee san. This starts with Karen's family name, Lee. In Japanese, Lee. 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 After this is San. A polite suffix attached to a person's name. Sa. San. This suffix can be used with any gender and translates as Miss in Karen's case. Together it's Lee San. Miss Lee. Lee San. Next is the particle. No. The possessive marking particle. No. Think of. No. As a way to indicate possession, like the apostrophe S in Karen's family. The word it follows possesses the thing that comes after it. In this sentence, it marks. Lee san. Miss Lee as the possessor. Together. Lee san no. Is Miss Lee's. Lee san no. After this is. Kazoku. Family. Ka, zo, ku. Kazoku. Together. Lee san no kazoku. Literally means Miss Lee's family. Lee san no kazoku. But it translates as your family. In Japanese, it's more common and polite. To address a person by their name and polite suffix rather than directly with words like you or your. Next is. Des. In this case, it's like the is in Is this your family? Des. Des. Last is the particle. Ka. The question marking particle. This turns the sentence into a question. Ka. Altogether, it's. Lee san no kazoku desu ka? This literally means, Miss Lee's family, this is. But it translates as, Is this your family? Lee san no kazoku desu ka? Note that this is understood from the context of the conversation, as the teacher is pointing at the picture when she asks the question. Lee san no kazoku desu ka? Remember this question. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, Yes, this is my husband, son, daughter, and me? Hi, Otto to, Musuko to, Musume to, Watashi desu. There are two parts to the response. The first part is. Hi. 
meaning yes. Ha, i, hai. It answers the teacher's yes or no question. Is this your family? リーさんの家族ですか In the second part, Karen lists the different members of her family while pointing at each family member. 夫と息子と娘と私です。This is my husband, son, daughter, and me. 夫と息子と娘と私です。First is 夫 Literally, husband, but translates as my husband. 夫夫 Note, the my is understood from context. Next is the particle と meaning and in this context. と息子 son. むすこ息子 After this, と and と娘 daughter. むすめ娘 Again, と and と私 translates as me in this context. わたしわたし Last is this. In this case, it's like the is in this is my husband. It's a linking verb. This. Altogether, it's. 夫と息子と娘と私です。This literally means husband and son and daughter and me. This is. But it translates as this is my husband, son, daughter, and me. Note. This is understood from context and refers to the group of family members in the photograph Karen and Tomoko are looking at. Notice this Japanese sentence doesn't include a specific word that means my, like in English. Instead, it is understood through context. Again, The pattern is My family member word to my family member word to my family member word to watashi desu. My family member word and my family member word and my family member word and me. Note the particle to follows each family member. This is an important pattern for your task. To use this pattern, simply replace the family member placeholders with members of your family. Imagine your family members are your wife, your son, your daughter, and you. Tsuma. Wife. Tsuma. Tsuma. Say, This is my wife, son, daughter, and me. Ready? My wife, son, daughter, and me. When talking about your own husband or wife, use the words 夫 husband, and 妻 wife. However, When referring to another person's husband or wife, use the following words. 旦那さん husband, 旦那さん奥さん wife, 奥さん In addition, when referring to someone else's son or daughter, 息子さん son, 息子さん娘さん Daughter, 娘さん Note the suffix さん attached to each word. You should be aware of these terms referring to other people's family members, but you won't need them for this lesson. Let's look at some examples. 
Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Otto to Musco to Musme to Watashi des. Otto to Musco to Musme to Watashi des. Tsma to Musco to Musme to Watashi des. Tsma to Musco to 娘と私です。妻と娘と私です。妻と娘と私です。夫と息子と私です。夫と息子と私です。夫と。息子二人と私です。夫と息子二人と私です。Did you notice how the last speaker indicates that she has two sons? と息子二人と私です。This is my husband, two sons, and me. 息子二人。Two sons. 息子二人。First is. 息子。Son. 息子。Next is. 二人。Meaning two people. 二人。二人。Together. 息子二人。Literally means son, two people. But it translates as two sons. Note the Japanese word for son doesn't change as most Japanese nouns do not have plural forms. Instead, when talking about the number of something, the noun is followed by a number and counter. In this case, to say two daughters. Two daughters. You should be aware of this pattern, but you will not need it for this lesson. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say me? 私、私。And how to say end? と、と。Do you remember the word for daughter? 娘、娘。And the word for son? 息子、息子。Do you remember how Karen says, "My husband"? 夫、夫。And how to say yes? はい、はい。Do you remember how Colin says, "This is my husband, son, daughter, and me"? Otto to Musume to Watashi des. Otto to Musko to Musume to Watashi des. Do you remember how to say family? 家族、家族。And how the teacher addresses Karen? Hint: She uses her last name, Lee. Lee san. Lee san. Do you remember how the teacher says, Miss Lee's family? Lee san の家族
Lee さんの家族。Do you remember how the teacher asks, is this your family? リーさんの家族ですかリーさんの家族ですか ?Do you remember the word for wife? 妻妻。Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark's colleague, Yoshi Nakamura. You have a wife and a daughter. Respond to Mark's question referring to the photo. Don't forget to include the word for yes at the beginning of your response. Ready? Nakamura san no kazoku desu ka? Hai, tsuma to, musume to, watashi desu. Listen again and repeat. はい、妻と娘と私です。はい、妻と娘と私です。Let's try another. Imagine you're Mark's boss, Noriko Nagaoka. You have a husband, a daughter, and a son. Ready? 長岡さんの家族ですか。はい、夫と娘と息子と私です。Listen again and repeat. はい、夫と娘と息子と私です。はい、夫と娘と息子と私です。Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark's friend, Yoshimi Yamaguchi. You have a husband and a son. Ready? 山口さんの家族ですか。はい。夫と息子と私です。Listen again and repeat. はい、夫とと息子と私です。はい、夫とと息子と私です。みなさんこんにちは、カノーカナです。Hi everyone, I'm Kana Kano. In this lesson, you learn how to greet someone at different times of the day. This is Tomoko Tanaka, the Lee family's Japanese teacher. Her schedule for the day is Mark Lee at 9 a.m., Karen Lee at 12 p.m., Ben Lee at 6 p.m. Listen to the greeting exchange between the three pairs. Pay attention to the time of day. Tanaka Sensei, Ohayo Gozaimas. Lee san, Ohayo Gozaimas. Konnichiwa. Lee san, Konnichiwa. こんばんは。ベン君、こんばんは。Once more with the English translation. タナカ先生、おはようございます。Good morning, Miss Tanaka. リーさん、おはようございます。Good morning, Mr. Lee. Good afternoon. Lee さん o n n i c h i w a Good afternoon, Miss Lee.
先生、こんばんは。Good evening, teacher. ベン君、こんばんは。Good evening, Ben. Let's take a closer look at each of these expressions. In the first conversation, do you remember how Mark says, Good morning, Miss Tanaka? Tanaka Sensei, Ohayo Gozaimas. First is Tanaka Sensei, Miss Tanaka. Tanaka Sensei. First, Mark addresses his teacher. Tanaka Sensei. This starts with the teacher's family name. Tanaka. 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 After this is Sensei. Teacher. Sensei. 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 Note when. Sensei is used as a suffix. The meaning will depend on the context, as it can be attached to the names of teachers, doctors, lawyers, and politicians. In the case of Tanaka Sensei, it translates as Miss, since she's a private teacher and the situation is less formal. Together, it's Tanaka Sensei, Miss Tanaka. Tanaka Sensei. Next is おはようございます。Meaning, good morning. おはようございます。おはようございます。There are two parts to this expression. おはよう。And ございます。First is おはよう。It comes from the adjective はやい。Meaning, early. おはよう。Pronunciation note. Notice the prolonged pronunciation of the vowel at the end of おはよう Listen again. おはよう This is called the long vowel. Second is ございます A polite form of the verb to be or to exist. ございます Together おはようございます Literally means early it is, but it translates as good morning. おはようございます。In Japanese, there are different levels of formality. This expression is formal. For informal situations, you can simply say the first part おはよう。Good morning. おはよう。All together. 田中先生、おはようございます。Literally, Miss Tanaka, good morning. But in more natural English, good morning, Miss Tanaka. 田中先生、おはようございます。Do you remember how the teacher says, Good morning, Mr. Lee? リーさん、おはようございます。First is, リーさん、Mr. Lee. リーさん。This starts with Mark's family name, Lee. In Japanese, Li, Li, Li. After this is, San, a polite suffix attached to a person's name. Sa, n, san. The suffix can be used with any gender. In Mark's case, it translates as Mr. Together, Li san. Mr. Li. Li san. Next is, o h a y o gozaimasu. Good morning. おはようございます。おはようございます。All together it's リーさん、おはようございます。Good morning, Mr. Lee. リーさん、おはようございます。In the second conversation, which takes place at noon, do you remember how Karen says, Good afternoon? こんにちは。こんにちは。means good afternoon. こんにちは。こんにちは。こんにちは。consists of two parts. first is こんにち
A formal way of saying today. Konnichi. Second is the particle. Wa. The topic marking particle. Wa. Think of it like as for in the expression as for today. Together. Konnichiwa. Literally means as for today, but it translates as good afternoon or hello, depending on the context. Konnichiwa. Note the pronunciation of wa here. It's pronounced wa instead of ha when used as a particle. Also note, when pronouncing this word, konnichi, be sure to pronounce the n sound. Konnichi. Do you remember how Miss Tanaka says, Good afternoon, Miss Lee. Lee san, konnichiwa. Tanaka sensei calls Karen Lee. Lee san. This starts with Karen's family name, Lee. 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 After this is san. A polite suffix attached to a person's name. San. The suffix can be used with any gender. In Karen's case, it translates as miss. Together, Lee san. Miss Lee. Lee san. Next is Konnichiwa. Good afternoon. Konnichiwa. Altogether, it's Lee san. Konnichiwa. Good afternoon, Miss Lee. Lee san, Konnichiwa. In the third conversation, which takes place in the evening at 6 p.m., do you remember how Ben says, Good evening, teacher? When addressing his teacher, Ben simply uses 先生 without adding her name. People often address their teachers by the title 先生 without attaching it to a name when it's clear which teacher they're talking to. Next is the greeting こんばんは meaning good evening. こんばんは 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 consists of two parts. First is konban, meaning this evening. Konban. Second is the particle wa, the topic marking particle. Wa. Think of it like as for in the expression as for this evening. Together, konban wa literally means as for this evening, but it translates as good evening. Pronunciation note. When pronouncing this word, be sure to clearly enunciate the n sound in konbanwa. Altogether, Ben says, Sensei, konbanwa. Do you remember how the teacher says, Good evening, Ben? Ben kun, konbanwa. First is Ben kun. Ben. Ben kun. This starts with Ben's name in Japanese. Ben. Be. N. Ben. After this is. Kun. A suffix attached to a person's name. Ku. N. Kun. It is often used to address males with whom the speaker has a close relationship, who are younger than the speaker, or who are of lower status than the speaker. In this case, the teacher, the speaker, is of higher social status than Ben, the student. There is no equivalent in English. Instead, the translation is contextual. In this case, there is no corresponding English translation, and Ben kun simply translates as Ben. Together it's Ben kun, konbanwa. Good evening, Ben. Ben kun, konbanwa. Konnichiwa is the most general greeting and the closest to hello in English. It can be used in the morning or even at night. When including a person's name in a greeting, it's more common to say the person's name before the greeting. In addition, using a person's name in a greeting may come across as more formal. In informal situations, 
it's not so common to say someone's name when greeting them. Let's review the greetings. Listen and repeat or speak along with me. Ohayou gozaimasu. Ohayou gozaimasu. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Konbanwa. Konbanwa. Tanaka sensei, ohayou gozaimasu. Tanaka sensei, ohayou gozaimasu. Sensei, konbanwa. Sensei, konbanwa. Ohayou. Ohayou. Did you notice how I used the shortened version of good morning? Ohayou. In informal situations, Ohayou gozaimasu. Is often shortened to. Ohayou. Ohayou. Please note that this abbreviated form should be avoided when speaking with people whom you don't know very well, who are older than you, or who may be regarded as your superior. You should be aware of this shortened greeting, but you don't need it for this lesson. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the polite way to say, Good morning! Ohayou gozaimasu! Ohayou gozaimasu! Do you remember how to say, Good afternoon! Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Do you remember how to say good evening? Konbanwa. Konbanwa. Let's practice. Imagine you're Ben and you're in morning class. Respond by saying Miss Tanaka, good morning. Ready? Ben kun, ohayou gozaimasu. Tanaka sensei, ohayou gozaimasu. Listen again and repeat. Tanaka sensei, ohayou gozaimasu. Tanaka sensei, ohayou gozaimasu. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mark and you're in afternoon class. Respond by saying hello. Ready? Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Listen again and repeat. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Karen and you meet your neighbor. Respond by saying good evening. Ready? Konbanwa. Konbanwa. Listen again and repeat. Konbanwa. Konbanwa. Helicopter. 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 Helicopter ga sora o tonde iru. A helicopter is flying in the sky. Helicopter ga sora o tonde iru. Kuroi. 
black. 黒い黒い black. 宇宙は黒い Outer space is black. 宇宙は黒い茶色い brown. 茶色い茶色い brown. 私の目は茶色い。My eyes are brown. 私の目は茶色い。グレー。グレイ。グレー。グレー。グレイ。グレイはあまり派手な色ではありません。Gray is not a very flashy color. Gray はあまり派手な色ではありません。休む。Rest. 休む。休む。Rest. しっかり休んで風を直す。I rest up and cure my cold. しっかり休んで風邪を治す。聞く。hear. 聞く。聞く。hear. あなたの言うことがよく聞こえない。I cannot hear you clearly. あなたの言うことがよく聞こえない。欲しい。want. 欲しい。欲しい。want. 自分の時間が欲しい。I want my own time. 自分の時間が欲しい。最低。disgusting. 最低。最低。disgusting. この国の人のテーブルマナーは最低だ In this country, people's table manners are disgusting. この国の人のテーブルマナーは最低だ。十一。十一。十一。Eleven. このデパートは11階まである。This department store has 11 floors. このデパートは11階まである。十二。Twelve. Twelve. 12.12 東京からパリまで12時間かかります。It takes 12 hours to go to Paris from Tokyo. 東京からパリまで12時間かかります。13。Thirteen. Jusan. Jusan. Thirteen. Kare wa j u s He is thirteen years old. Kare wa j u s a 
メール、イメール、メール、メール、イメール。メールアドレスを教えてくれませんか ?Can you tell me your email address? メールアドレスを教えてくれませんか携帯電話。cellular phone。携帯電話。携帯電話。cellular phone。携帯電話を持っていますか Do you have a cellular phone? 携帯電話を持っていますかショートメール。テキストメッセージ。ショートメール。ショートメール。テキストメッセージ。彼女はショートメールで連絡をくれた。She contacted me via text message. 彼女はショートメールで連絡をくれた。口。mouth. 口。口。mouth. 口に何かついてるよ。There is something at your mouth. 口に何かついてるよ。ほう、チーク。ほう、ほう、チーク。彼女の頬はとても赤い。Her cheeks are very red. 彼女の頬はとても赤い。鼻。nose. 鼻。鼻。nose. 彼の鼻は大きいです。His nose is big. 彼の鼻は大きいです。ノート。ノートブック。ノート。ノート。ノートブック。ノートを六冊買いました。I bought six notebooks. ノートを六冊買いました。鉛筆。pencil. 鉛筆。鉛筆。pencil. 鉛筆を一本買いに行った。I went to buy a pencil. 鉛筆を一本買いに行った。消しゴム。Eraser. 消しゴム。消しゴム。Eraser. この文房具店ではいろいろな種類の消しゴムが売っている。This stationery store sells many kinds of erasers. この文房具店ではいろいろな種類の消しゴムが売っている。White 白い白い White 
娘に白い帽子を買った。I bought a white hat for my daughter. 娘に白い帽子を買った。赤い。red. 赤い。赤い。red. その赤い傘は誰のですか ?Whose red umbrella is that? その赤い傘は誰のですか緑色 green 緑色緑色,緑色,緑色 green 緑色の服を買いたい。I want to buy green clothes. 緑色の服を買いたい。終える。Finish. 終える。終える。Finish. 私は去年コースを終えました。I finished the course last year. 私は去年コースを終えました。始める。start. 始める。始める。start. 9時からテストを始めます。We'll start the test at nine. 9時からテストを始めます。なる。become. なる。なる。become. 何になりたいですか ?What do you want to become? 何になりたいですか ?14.14.14.14 この建物は14階まであります。There are fourteen stories in this building. この建物は十四階まであります。十五。fifteen. 十五。十五。fifteen. 封筒を十五枚ください。Fifteen envelopes, please. 封筒を十五枚ください。十六 Sixteen. 十六十六 Sixteen. オペラは十六世紀にイタリアで始まった。オペラ began in Italy in the 16th century. オペラは16世紀にイタリアで始まった。電話 telephone. 電話。電話 telephone. 電話番号案内は104です。The telephone number for information is 104. 電話番号案内は104です。目
I me me I 目がかゆいなら眼科に行った方がいい。If your eye itches, you should go to an eye clinic. 目がかゆいなら眼科に行った方がいい。teeth, 歯、歯、teeth, 歯を磨きましたか ?Did you brush your teeth? 歯を磨きましたか唇、リップ。くちびる。リップ。あの人の唇は熱い。That person's lips are thick. あの人の唇は熱い。コピー機。コピーマシーンコピー機コピー機コピーマシーンそのコピー機は壊れています。That copy machine is broken. そのコピー機は壊れています。机デスク。机机机。デスク。机から本が落ちた。A book fell off the desk. 机から本が落ちた。本。book, 本本 book. いつも寝る前に本を読みます。I always read a book before I go to bed. いつも寝る前に本を読みます。pen, ペン、ペン、ペン、ペン。そのペンは誰のですか ?Whose pen is it? そのペンは誰のですか郵便局。ポストオフィス。郵便局。郵便局。ポストオフィス。郵便局でお金を振り込んだ。I transferred money at the post office. 郵便局でお金を振り込んだ。図書館。Lively. 図書館。図書館。Lively. 図書館で本を借りました。I borrowed some books from the library. 図書館で本を借りました。スーパー。スーパーマーケットスーパースーパースーパーマーケットスーパーでパンを買います。I buy bread at the supermarket. 
スーパーでパンを買います。Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. If you have trouble sticking with your language learning goals, it's probably because you're skipping one specific step. It's the step you need to take before you even start any learning. And doing it will help you stick with the language, not get overwhelmed, and reach your language goals. So today you'll learn one, what solo language learners need to succeed, and two, how to do self assessment and set yourself up for success. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF ebook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture ebook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you the 35 must know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. Here's a question for you. When you want to learn a language, how do you usually get started with that goal? You might say the inspiration comes first, and that motivates you to start. Then you get a textbook or an app and go from there, right? That's a pretty standard answer, but how does that tend to work out? Most people end up falling off a week or a month later. Why do you think that happens? Leave a comment with why you think people tend to lose inspiration quickly. More often than not, it happens because you pick a goal, a learning routine, or a resource that overwhelms you and just isn't right for you. Here's a typical example Let's say you work an eight hour day and you want to try to start learning. Most people would try to squeeze in learning for one or two hours at night, or you could try and wake up an hour early. And usually that doesn't work out because you're trying to do things that you're not used to wake up earlier and study earlier. It doesn't fit your current lifestyle. So, what should you do differently? Well, let's take an example from language schools. Before you start learning, language schools force you to take an assessment test on the first day. Why? So that they make sure the language lessons fit your level and put you in the proper class. The goal of an assessment test is to find out where you are and meet you there. That's something most solo learners don't do. And the problem is, if you're a solo learner, no one assesses you. And you yourself don't know what routine works best for you, how much time you can set aside, and how much studying you can comfortably do. We all imagine we can do an hour a day, but realistically speaking, it'll be a lot less than that. So, that's where self assessment comes in. Before you start learning a language, or do any goal for that matter, it's important to know where you are in life, what your daily schedule is like, when you're busy, and when you're free. So, you can set your expectations, know how much time you can put in, and so you can start learning at a pace that works for you. Now, how do you actually assess yourself? There are three assessments you can do one, a life assessment, two, a routine assessment, and three, language assessment. Language assessment will only be helpful if you already have some experience. If you're brand new, you won't need this. First, life assessment. Here, the goal is to see how the language will fit into your life and how you generally deal with goals. As in, if you succeeded with a goal before, what helped you succeed? You could take that and apply it here. If you failed before, find out why so you can avoid it this time. So you'll need to answer the following questions Why are you learning this language? 
how will it help your life? What current connections do you have to this language? For example, listening to music, watching TV, you have a relative, you have neighbors or friends that speak it. What have you been doing so far to learn? Have you learned languages before? Have you failed any goals before? How or why? Have you succeeded with any goals before? How or why? Write these questions out and answer them. Next, the routine assessment. Write out your daily routine for a whole week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., commute to work at 8.30 a.m., arrive at work at 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. The goal here is to see what your daily routine is like, so you know when you're free, when you're busy, and where you can fit in language learning. That way, if you're super busy on Mondays and five minutes is all you can do, then that's good enough. You won't feel bad about doing only five minutes. If you see that you spend 30 minutes on commuting, add language learning on top of that existing routine. If you take walks or go for a jog, play an audio lesson there. Or even if you're cooking at a certain time, play an audio lesson in the background. Remember, look for an existing routine that you already stick with, like commuting, and where you can multitask. Don't try to create new routines. For example, waking up at 7 a.m. to learn will set you up for failure. If you usually wake up at 8 a.m., waking up at 7 a.m. will be even harder. And then, actually trying to learn a language at 7 a.m. makes it even harder. This is where new learners start having trouble. You're trying to do two things at once, trying to learn the language and trying to stick to a new routine. One is hard enough. Trying to do two can overwhelm you. So piggyback off of your existing routines first so you can build momentum. And finally, there's language assessment. If you're an absolute beginner, you won't need much of an assessment. Just start with our absolute beginner recommended learning pathway. But if you have experience and want to assess yourself, there are two things you can do. First, if you're a Premium Plus user, then you're asked to do an assessment test when you join, but you can always request it again from your teacher. And second, if you're a Premium user, check our recommended pathways. We assign these pathways, level one to level five, based on your learning level, from absolute beginner to advanced. At the start of each pathway, there's a diagnostic test. You can take that to assess yourself. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about when routines grow stale, how to learn more language with a new routine. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time, bye. What are some surefire ways to stay motivated when you're learning a language? In this video, we're going to talk about 10 surefire ways to stay motivated and stay on track. All right, we asked our Premium and Premium Plus members for their tested techniques. You'll find out what worked for them. Number one, you must see your progress. In other words, you have to see it to believe it. There's nothing better than seeing your results firsthand. It's like seeing muscles in the mirror after working out. How do you do this with language? In order to see it, you have to start measuring it first. And you can do that with the dashboard on our website. With the dashboard, you can see how many lessons and how much of the language you've mastered so far. So review the progress you've made with the dashboard on the site. Number two, use the Daily Dose of Language app. With this, you get free daily mini lessons, but that's not all. This app keeps you on track because it actually sends you daily reminders. If you need that extra push or reminder, this app does it for you. And the Daily Dose lessons are quick and easy. They take just one minute of your time. Number three, learn with somebody better than you. A tutor, a friend, and you can even learn with your own teacher with a Premium Plus subscription. Simply having someone better than you by your side is enough to help you improve and motivate you. It's like having a coach. Number four, set a small, measurable goal. For example, finish 10 lessons in one week or learn 20 words in a week. Most people give up because they have a vague goal, like I wanna be fluent, that they don't know how to reach. But if you aim small and make it measurable, you'll have a much better chance of reaching it. Your goal is to learn 20 words, and you know 17 already. 
because you know how close you are, you're more motivated to close the gap and reach your goal. Number five, watch movies and shows in your target language. First of all, we recommend this because it's fun. But more importantly, when you understand what you hear, it's a clear sign of progress and you'll feel good about it. Number six, listen to music in your target language. Music is enjoyable, and if you make it part of your routine, you're giving yourself a nice break in between lessons. But you're still immersing yourself in the language. So if you enjoy this routine, you're more likely to stay motivated. Number seven, do the lessons that you enjoy. Just like with music, if you enjoy our audio and video lessons, then stick with them. If you have any favorite lessons, remember you can always download them to your device and review them as much as you want. They're yours to keep. Number eight, understand that language learning is a marathon. Learning a new language is not a sprint. Most people think they can study for hours and suddenly get better. But when they realize that it takes time, this can hurt their motivation. So understand that it's a marathon. Remember that it's better to study for a few minutes every day than pulling a five hour cram session that will burn you out. Number nine, keep the big goal in mind. Imagine yourself being fluent. Small, measurable goals are definitely important, but when you just don't feel like learning, which is completely natural, by the way, remember the big goal. Having the big picture in mind will remind you of what's important and put you back on track. Number 10, invest in the language. Make a commitment. Whether you buy a book or a subscription, enroll in a class, or join a study group, by investing and making a commitment, you're much more likely to go through with it. You've paid for it, so you value it more. You want to make sure you get your money's worth. Plus, other people expect you to show up. This can be extremely helpful when working towards your language goals. And that's it. There are so many ways to keep yourself motivated. Do you have a favorite way? Leave us a comment and let us know. So to make sure you stay motivated in your studies, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speak and understand more of your target language? You'll need to know more words and phrases to really make new conversations and ultimately connections. In this video, you'll discover six ways to master new words and phrases fast. Number one, use our free vocabulary lists. Here's what makes this study tool so powerful. This is your free library of vocab and phrase lessons. You can learn words and phrases for current events like Halloween or New Year's. There are also many useful topics like the top 10 ways to say hello, conversational phrases, and more. In other words, you learn phrases that you wouldn't normally find in textbooks. And if you wanna learn extra fast, you can use the slideshow tool. Just tap on or click on View Slideshow, then sit back and review the words and phrases. Find the vocabulary lists in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. And yes, these vocab lists are free for all users. Number two, take the audio and video lessons. One of the best ways to learn new words is through conversations. You get to hear how the words are used. So in every lesson dialogue, you'll come across some words you don't know. But don't worry, because our teachers translate everything. So when you hear the conversation again at the end of the lesson, you'll know them all. Number three, learn with our 2000 most common words list. Here's a question for you. How many words do you think you need for conversational fluency? 3000, 5000? Actually, language experts say you need only about 1500 to reach conversational fluency. And with this study tool, the 2000 most common words list, you get the words you need for conversational fluency right up front. That's what makes this study tool so powerful. It's all here for you. And they're broken down into simple categories, such as adjectives, nouns, verbs, food, drinks, numbers, and months. Now, 2000 is quite a lot to learn. Do you have to learn it all? Well, you don't have to learn it all at once. You can go category by category. You can also start with the top 100 words, then move on to the top 200, 300, and so on until you get to 2000. So if you're an absolute beginner, you can start with the top 100 words. Once you've mastered those, you can move on to the next category. You can also use other study tools to learn these words faster, right? Such as number four, study with spaced repetition flashcards. 
Now, we're not talking about paper flashcards. We're talking about the smart flashcards that you can find in our premium study tools. Picture this. Think of these as a teacher inside of your computer who quizzes you and sorts the words for you. So words that you struggle with, you'll be quizzed on more and more, and words that you know, you'll see less and less. So they display the words as needed, so you never forget them. In every session, they'll refresh your memory on the words you learned last time and introduce new ones. That's exactly how our smart flashcards work. And because you get drilled on the words you struggle with, you have no choice but to master them and improve. You have no choice but to succeed. You can also study the words from your lessons and vocab lists with the very same flashcard tool. Number five, create printable word lists with the word bank. The word bank is a study tool that lets you save words and phrases from lessons and vocab lists. Think of it as your extended brain. If you come across a new word that you want to review later, you can save it to the word bank. But the word bank also lets you print out your word lists. So click on the printer friendly option inside word bank and print out your collection of words. You can use that sheet for writing practice. Number six, use the words. After you learn a new word, using it right away is crucial to remembering it. So when you're done with a lesson or a vocab list, leave a comment. Make up a sample sentence and post it in the comment section. Write it down in a notebook or shadow it, meaning listen to the audio pronunciation and say it out loud. You should do this because it's the actual practice that gets you to remember it. So say it, write it, listen to it again. Doing this will help lock the words into your memory. So if you want to take advantage of any of these tools for yourself, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Are you studying a language but starting to lose motivation? In this video, we're going to talk about the halfway point and how to keep going with language learning. After six months to a year of studying a language, you might be feeling like you're losing a little bit of steam. Maybe you started out strong and now you're feeling a bit low. Maybe you aren't seeing the results you wanted or you think your efforts aren't paying off. But the reason for that might not have anything to do with your studies. It might be more an issue about your reviewing and your goal setting. One, why you should review your past language goals. When you set goals, do you ever go back to review your progress? It can be a reminder of how far you've come and help you keep your motivation up. Let's say you started learning a language and you've been at it for a few months. In month one, you're excited and motivated. In month two, you're still going at it, but maybe the motivation is not as strong and you wanna make sure that you don't fall off, unfortunately, as most people do. So you work hard to keep at it. By month three, you're kind of on autopilot and learning with whatever has been working for you. That sounds like a good place to be, cruising on autopilot. Well, it may seem like a good place to be, but the problem is by month four, five, or six, if you've been coasting along for too long and haven't had any significant improvements, you may start wondering if you're actually learning or if you'll ever master the language. You might start losing motivation, and worse, you might even quit. If you're learning by yourself, it's hard, and if you're not tracking your progress, by month four or five, you might realize that the textbook you've been using isn't helping you increase your fluency. You might think you're going nowhere. So the reason to review is to check your progress. Maybe you can speak none of your target language in month one, but at the end of month three, you can speak three minutes. So that's some progress. And if you're at eight minutes now, for example, then you can definitely say that you've improved since the start. It's good for motivation, just knowing that you got a return on your time investment. So reviewing is good for progress and motivation. Also, it's natural to lose motivation with anything you're trying to learn or do. So it's something you need to keep up, something you need to keep in mind. What do you do when your motivation dips? You can stop, take some time to review and reflect. Is your motivation dipping? Are you studying less? Do you feel like you're not making progress? And if you say yes to these questions, then you can work on boosting your motivation to help you keep going. How do you boost your motivation? Well, do you remember anchor points? Anchor points are things that connect you or anchor you to your goal, such as a language class or a program. It could even be relatives or friends who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, or an upcoming trip to the target country. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. 
So if you're watching a TV show in your target language, then it's natural for you to want to understand it better, and your desire to learn goes up. If you're taking language classes where a teacher expects homework from you, that's another connection to the language. So you do the homework, you attend classes, you learn more. Ultimately, if you want to boost your motivation and keep going, you should get more anchor points. But how do you do that? Let's jump into the second part. Two, how to review your progress and maintain motivation. How do you review your progress? First, you always set small, measurable goals and always track results. The study resource you're using can be used for your review as well. It's easy to get demotivated and think that you've learned nothing. But if you're using a textbook, for example, you can set a number of pages and that can be a really good motivator, something to reach for. Making sure you're getting through and then testing yourself on material is a little harder if you're not actually using your textbook though. So make sure that you actually stick to the plan you set for yourself. Again, the tool you're using is not so important, but just make sure whatever you use, you measure it and track your progress. Reviewing is as simple as looking at your past goals and results. You can also do it the old school way and look through your notebooks, see how much you've written out. In fact, we have something called the Dean's Date with our Premium Plus plan, where our Premium Plus users send in all of the work they've completed with their teacher. The writings, the recordings, the assignments, and you can see it all, everything that you've done. Then you can see your actual results of your three months of work. Everything you've accomplished is in one place. Do you ever run out of motivation? Of course you do occasionally, and it's natural for everyone's motivation to dip after some time. Then if you lose motivation, how do you keep going? Just as we talked about earlier, add more anchor points, more connections to the language, whether that means enrolling in in-person classes at a real language school, planning trips, or signing up for a test. Those anchor points help you stay motivated. Your main ones need to be things that will keep you interested in your target language or the people in your life connected to it. These are the things that will keep you motivated. But it's also important to remember, whether you're struggling or you're progressing rapidly, that you have to keep your learning adaptive. As humans, we are adaptive. We adapt to environments, and this is the same thing. Your language learning path has to adapt as you progress. If you're progressing faster, there's a way to adapt. If you're progressing slower, there's also a way to adapt. Three, how you can keep going past the halfway point. If you've been studying the language for a few months, it's normal to start losing steam. If you're not losing steam and you're progressing, then great job, and maybe you can share some of your tips with us because it's one of the hardest things ever to stay motivated long term. If you are starting to lose steam, remember that this happens with any goal. It can happen to anyone at any time, so you need to learn how to adapt to it. By being aware that these dips are natural and that they happen, you can expect them. So when one does come around, you'll know how to boost your motivation and know how to keep yourself going. Here's what you do when a dip does come around. One, review your learning progress. If you've been setting small, measurable goals every month, then this won't be a problem. The goal here is to see how far you've come, and this will help you maintain motivation. If you can see that you learned 50 words in January, 50 in February, 100 in March, and so on, then you have measurable progress. And this lets you know that you're improving, even when you don't feel like you are. Second, if you're a Premium Plus student, you can also participate in the Dean's Date and submit your work on the deadline. Be sure to ask your Premium Plus teacher about it. Third, if you're a Premium or Premium Plus user, you can also check your dashboard and see how many flashcards you've studied and how many lessons you've completed. We track your progress for you. But of course, it's best to set goals like learn 50 words or speak one minute of conversation because completing a lesson may not mean that you've mastered everything inside. So if you've not been setting goals and tracking them, now is the time to start. Otherwise, do you know how much of the language you can speak? or how many words you've learned? If you don't know, then you'll feel like you're floating around and not learning anything. So be sure to set small, measurable monthly goals. Fourth, create more anchor points to boost your motivation. Anchor points are connections to the language that keep you anchored to the language and your goal. It could be friends or relatives who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, an upcoming trip to the target country, language classes, or language programs. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. So if you started learning a language because your relative speaks it, that motivation may not last forever. It may help you in month one or month two, but by month four, five, or six, your motivation might wear off. 
but you can decide to enroll in a class or start watching a TV show in that language. That will give you some new reasons to keep going to the language. In a way, you give yourself more reasons to learn. A lot of the time, the reasons why we start something are not often the reasons why we continue them. So don't be afraid to adjust your motivations as you go along. If you've reached a language milestone and are starting to feel a little less motivated, just take a look at these tips. Thorough review, setting anchor points, and reviewing your study methods will all help you keep going in your studies. For more strategies on how to keep studying, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Great work! Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.